Like I mentioned, my name is Marie Fredriksson. I'm a Swedish songwriter, singer and pianist. I'm most known for being in the duo band Roxette, together with Pergesel. Thank you, Marie, for taking the time to be here with us today. It, it's, it's such a pleasure talking to you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me in your interview. Thank you. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit about your career, your journey? Of course. I have been in the music business for over 40 years. It all started in the late 70s when I met Per Jessel and we formed Roxette. In the 80s, Roxette released some of their greatest hits such as The Look, Listen to Your Heart, and It Must Have Been Love. Before Roxette, I was in another band during the early to mid 80s called Mama's Barn. However, Roxette became my biggest success as a singer. So, um, what do you enjoy the most about Roxette? Roxette is and was known for its melodic pop rock and the contrast between my and Per's voices. So what I loved the most was the music we created together. It has been a blast performing with Per. What is your favorite Roxette song, the one you really love to sing when you're on the stage? Oh, that's a tough one. I guess I would say, it must have been love. It's such a big crowd pleaser and it's, it's a classic love song in my book. Um, okay, can we talk a little bit about your personal life and your romantic life? I see you're a very shy person and you never like to talk about your personal life. Why? Thanks for noticing my shyness, that is true. I'm very introverted and usually don't want to talk about my personal life especially with strangers. I've had some issues in the past with paparazzis and the media chasing after me. I understand. Um, tell me a little bit about your childhood. My childhood? I grew up in the city of Stockholm, Sweden. I've always had a love for music since I was little. I started playing piano when I was eight and started writing my own songs when I was around 14. When I met Per Jessel, I found my other half who shares my passion for music, and Roxette was formed. Okay, Marie, um, let's go back to Roxette. Um, when you are traveling the world and you are meeting the fans, what do you like the most about traveling and touring the world? I love performing on stage and singing to an audience of fans who appreciate our music. Nothing beats the thrill of standing in front of a sea of fans and singing my heart out. It's a rush of adrenaline and pure joy. You have, you are a very successful solo musician. You have songs like For Don Som Elska, um, Forgive My Swedish, It's Terrible, and uh, Den Besta Dogen. Um, what is your favorite solo song? Because your solo career It's very different from Roxette's. Um, I feel like it's a lot more personal in your album than Stendi Garrison. Forgive me again for my terrible Swedish. Um, it sounds very sad. And there's this contrast. Roxette sometimes sounds very happy. And then your personal songs, they sound very dramatic and sad. Why? Yes, that's true. Roxette and my solo career are quite different in sound. Roxette is more of a pop rock band, whereas my solo work leans more towards the dramatic side. I think this is due to the fact that Roxette's songs are more collaborative, with Per and me working together. Uh, with my solo songs I have complete creative control, so I can really delve into my emotions and make it a more personal expression. Yeah, I understand that. So, um, you're a very shy person, as we have already um, discussed. But when you are writing your songs, is that a way for you to let your emotions out and share your emotions and communicate with your fans? Or is it just something that you do to yourself? Yes, songwriting is a way for me to express my emotions through my music. It's like therapy for me. I pour my heart and soul into my songs and I hope that it can connect with my fans on a deeper level. Sometimes it's also just for myself, a way for me to process my own feelings. Yes, I understand. Um, what are you looking forward to in life? Now that Roxette is on hiatus, I have been focusing on my solo career and other personal projects. 
I've also spent some quality time with my family and friends. In the future, I hope to continue making music that I'm passionate about and that connects with listeners. I also have a few other creative endeavors I'm currently working on, so stay tuned. Um, can you share with us what are the other endeavors you're working on? We are very excited to hear about it. Sure, I'm, I'm currently working on a couple of different things. One is a collaboration with a couple of other singers and songwriters on a new album. I also have started to dip my toes into some charity work, and I'm planning a few charity concerts in the future. Nothing is concrete yet, so you'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. Great. Once I read one of your interviews and you said that you were afraid of the war. Why are you afraid of the war specifically? I think anyone in their right mind would be afraid of war. The idea of violence and destruction is something horrifying. And the thought of innocent people being caught in the crossfire is absolutely tragic. War is something that brings out the worst in humanity. And I think any rash rational person would not want that to happen. I agree with you. So um, do you have any uh, a message that could just try to bring more peace to the world? What would you what would you say? My message would be to encourage everyone to practice empathy and understanding. The world is in dire need of more empathy and compassion towards one another. If we can learn to put aside our differences and listen to each other, we can build a more peaceful world. Spread love, not hate. That's so beautiful. Your song, Listen to Your Heart, everybody knows that one. Um, so we are almost running out of time here. So when it comes to listening to our hearts, what would you tell people who are struggling with issues, whether it's a health issue, for example, or a mental issue? What message would you like to, to give them? I would tell those who are struggling with themselves and their intuition. Often, when we're going through tough times, we seek advice from others and try to find solutions from external sources. But we often forget that the best person to know what we truly need is ourselves. So it's important to take the time to listen to our inner voice and trust that it will guide us to make the best decisions for ourselves. Listen to your heart and it will never steer you wrong. <laughs> 